Okay, good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome to uh, one of our next webinar of uh, that we have done from CredEx. I hope all of you are safe and uh, your family members are safe too. I uh, also hope that uh, this entire COVID situation will go away as, as soon as possible. Uh, so our topic for this uh, webinar today is alternative blending options for businesses during the pandemic. Uh, I think it's, uh, uh, if you ask me, I think it's, uh, it's the most hottest topic right now. And the reason is uh, because um, every business is fundamentally struggling with uh, every business is fundamentally struggling with the uh, with the impact that the COVID has done on the businesses. Be it uh, uh, you know, uh, be it uh, you know, consumer facing businesses, a B two B, even the fintechs or the finance or the banks are not uh, un untouched by them. So uh, it's a it's a topic where everybody wants to understand what's uh, what's going on and how we can survive in this situation. So uh, what we'll do in this uh, webinar is uh, for the first 30 minutes, we'll uh, talk about in terms of uh, what are the different options through which a business can get finance in, this, uh, in these times. And the next 30 minutes will be a Q&A session. I would request everybody to put, please put your question on the Q&A section and that only and not uh, on, the chart, on the chat section. Uh, we will after the end of the uh, after the first 30 minutes we'll take the uh, question answers um, i just uh, i would like to also apologize uh, apologize uh, that in case i will not able to uh, answer all the questions we will still get back to all of you and try to uh, you know answer those questions through email or, or other mode um, so starting with uh, you know the the now going back to the topic and starting uh, the alternate lending options um, so uh, let's let's first talk about what's the impact that has happened on COVID uh, nineteen on business. Um, so apart from the usual suspects that we see mostly, uh, which is fundamentally that the businesses are shut because of lockdown. Uh, the lockdown, what I still term as, is more of a humanitarian crisis, which is more of a psychological angle in terms of everybody wants everybody to be safe, themselves to be safe, their family to be safe. Uh, you know, so this is fundamentally a humanitarian crisis and it's more deal with the psychology part of it. Uh, uh, what, what basically we also try to, uh, uh, but what people uh, is, is still not unfolded in our uh, world or in the entire world as of now is the economical and financial crisis of it. Uh, so what we are seeing is uh, because of the shutting down of the shops, there is a cash flow of the businesses has uh, has almost reduced. We have a lot of businesses which are saying that their cash flow is reduced to almost zero. Uh, there are few which are still uh, struggling. There are few who has uh, who who has basically gone into uh, uh, you know uh, looking into alternate or pivoting what we call in as part of it, which is basically can they survive in in other uh, mode by by trying to do something else. Uh, so that's that's mostly what is happening right now. Uh, but I tell you what what is going to happen post COVID uh, or not post COVID but fundamentally post lockdown is when the business started coming to that, uh, normal a lot of businesses will start seeing that the people's or the customers perspective is changing uh, fundamentally because of the uh, entire sphere of, of uh, you know uh, social distancing and COVID and, and uh, disease etc a lot of people will not go to a lot of places or will prefer a more uh, you know a more uh, social way of or more digital way of doing businesses. So you will see an increase in uh, increase in where there is a um, e-commerce or online learning, as well as uh, one thing which also going to shift is a lot of people is going to shift to healthy foods, healthy products, and all. Right. So. Uh, also, maybe for the first six to nine months period, what will also happen that the people will only only going to buy what is essential, and not going to buy what is a wish list or what is desired. So, um, you know what it leads to a lot of different products get get shuffle into each other, and a lot of businesses will go down uh, um, uh, will go down in terms of they were not able to pay, they were not able to uh, process and other things. So a lot of businesses there will be a need of in terms of uh, you know the, to get the finance or to get the cash flow from somebody. 
uh, what we are also hearing is interesting thing is a lot of these migrant problems that is happening, which is migrants are trying to move back to their home states. Uh, a lot of businesses are also saying that these migrants laborers will not move back again to the uh, working thing, and the reason why is because uh, of the um, because of the turmoil that they have gone through, or because of the hardship that they have gone through. Uh, it it is very very likely that they are not going to come back in the near future. We have already seen a lot of uh, drivers, a lot of, um, you know, both for uh, Ola over as well as for truck drivers who are moving back to their home state and they are trying to, um, they are trying to uh, find out some mode of uh, uh, living in their home state. So possibly that scenario will continue to be there for some time. So a lot of businesses or manufacturing unit will might find a problem in even uh, trying to find out what's how to get the labor to do the uh, things. There will be definitely uh, 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 there will be definitely uh, you know impact on in terms of. Uh, uh, orders will be dipping, supply chain getting affecting a lot of um, the. Now I will also talk about the silver lining and, and a bit it on this. Uh, there is also a big uh, a big mindset that is also going on in the in the uh, business world is a lot of manufacturing will get shifted from China to India. We have already seen Japan Japan government uh, uh, asking the Japanese uh, companies to move uh, to any other country except China and they are ready to incentivize up to $2 billion to these, these companies. Uh, we are seeing the same thing from uh, Korea where Korean company has been asked to move out of China either to back to Korea or to any other manufacturing hub. So I think this is a uh, perfect time for Indian government and, uh, and all the businesses to grab those opportunities to see if they they can provide uh, what China was aware earlier was providing, so in that way there is a silver lining in this COVID situation. And if we can, uh, you know, uh, uh, bound on this opportunity, that that would be uh, good on 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 the terms of the businesses. Now, uh, just. Yeah, so uh, moving on to the financial imp uh, implications of the pandemic. Uh, so what, as I, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of this is, uh, what will happen is uh, since a lot of businesses will go down, uh, it's, it's basically the fear psychosis which will go upon into a lot of financial institution. Uh, what will happen is a lot of banks or a lot of uh, NBFCs or other financial institution will not uh, uh, try to underwrite these loans. Or, or the demand for these loans. Uh, we have already seen um, the last year sometimes when RBI has come up with a, uh, with, with uh, how much is the corporate credit demand is shrinking. They said there is almost 60% shrink in the corporate credit uh, rather than demand, I would say supply. So 60% uh, 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 shrink in the corporate credit uh, supply has happened last year. Now, in the morning today, when we woke up, we woke up with uh, uh, a, a very uh, alarming news where Franklin Temple Dam uh, has actually shut down six of their credit funds worth 28,600 crores. Uh, what this means is uh, that they have uh, stopped all redemptions, all payouts, everything from that fund. Uh, that again going to have a cascading effect because a lot of credit funds which is with the uh, amcs there will be a lot of withdrawal that will happen a lot of people who are uh, who, a lot of banks and bfc who are sitting on those funds wants, wants to just stick on those funds uh, again there is another news also that came in the morning is that out of the 50000 uh, ltro fund which uh, the rbi has given to the banks to lend it to nbfc only 25000 has been picked so even banks are now scared to give it to NBFCs also, uh, not only for uh, to, to the businesses. So what will happen is it will be similar or even uh, I would say much worse liquidity crisis that we have seen a year back that is going to come. So a lot of businesses wants to get money, wants to um, you know uh, need cash flows uh, to fund their businesses, fund their growth, but there will be very dearth of those capitals into it. Um, also, uh, what will happen is a lot of banks is going to see the curves, the growth of the businesses and the growth of the businesses in the, in, in from the last two months to the next maybe three to six more months will be actually down. So it's a, if it is a non-growing business that will also add into in terms of that business that banks and financial institution will not able to lend to these uh, uh, to the companies. 
so um, i think um, one thing which as a businesses which all of us needs to understand and we need to uh, define is uh, cash flow become very very important in these times so we need to ascertain that we have a good cash flow strategy uh, in in place for for uh, our businesses now uh, so how we will move into a a, a seamless cash flow uh, see there are i would say suggest that there should be some there there is some survival kit that i would definitely want to uh you know discuss here with all of you is uh, possibly uh, we all have to renegotiate the deals that we have uh, we need to check in into all the expenses that we are going into we have to cut down on the expenses we have to find out alternative even if for example if i'm a business who is comfortable right now i don't i should not be sit ideal and say that i am comfortable right now i need to plan for a month or two months three months and maybe it's a six months in advance what i mean is that if i say that my business is going to grow let's say or not grow or whatever it's it's in six months time i need to make sure that i have sufficient capital in place for that and if i don't then i need to start working on finding those capital immediately uh, rather than uh, waiting for it for uh, the six months to come and uh, start doing it so we have to make sure that uh, as a business we survive this part uh, again the silver lining is that uh, you know the businesses who is going to survive this crisis is going to be amazing businesses uh, fundamentally and i have seen uh, two crises in my world uh, in my life uh, one is the 2002 crisis of uh, dot com bubble burst and another is the 2007-8 crisis of the uh, housing bubble burst in us and i would definitely say that the businesses which survived the crisis and this is by far the biggest crisis that i have seen in my life and a lot of people are saying possibly the biggest in human uh, history also Uh, but the businesses which is going to survive this crisis is going to make a lot of progress, a lot of growth, and possibly becomes the uh, uh, you know the uh, the the large large companies are going to get created in this uh, uh, scenarios. So uh, that's that's on um, that's uh, uh, is my suggestion in terms to looking into uh, the capital, get capital even if it means not at your own terms. Maybe it means uh, it equity capital. Maybe you are, you feel that your business is valuing. x but somebody is ready to only give you money at x minus y valuation i would suggest take it uh, if somebody is giving you a debt at a higher cost than what you earlier used to pay take it uh, the the more important right now is getting the capital rather than the cost of capital that is associated with it so um, now moving into uh, you know how we generally at credex thinks of capital is uh and uh this is generally how i suggest businesses to look into capital also is as fundamentally we need to look into two, two ways one is uh, a working capital and second is the growth capital and i'll tell you how this is two different uh a working capital is fundamentally is is a pool of capital or or or, or a, a moving capital which is basically available to you on a day to day basis it can be for uh, salaries payroll uh, paying it to your vendors it could be your account payables the inflows could be in the form of account receivables uh, it the pool can be in form of a, a od or a cc loan which is there from the banks so anything which is a pool of capital where you can dip down into as per your uh, needs uh get as capitals and putting into your business and grow your business is, is fundamentally what we call it is a working capital now how this is different from a growth capital is a growth capital is where you fundamentally spend your capital or money into assuming the long term growth or forecasting the long term growth of the company uh for example uh, let's say as a manufacturing unit you need to put up another manufacturing unit or you need to put up a new machinery or you have to invest in a in a software development expenses or any kind of expenses which is which is basically uh, more from the perspective that is going to help your company in growing uh, further in terms of um, or or see this way growth capital is mostly like something which uh, uh, which is an asset to the company. company which you are amortizing uh, or depreciating across uh, across next couple of years so that's that's the that's how uh, we see uh, the capital is and uh, fundamentally a company only needs a working capital or a growth capital there's no other set of capitals which anybody needs fundamentally because uh, either you can club your if you are running a business either you can club your expenses or your requirement as part of the working capital or as a part of the growth capital 
now uh, while raising the fund what i suggest the businesses to look into is to always look inward first and do your own homework in terms of finding out what kind of capital you need uh, in case if you need a working capital go around finding a working capital pool if you feel that no i need a growth capital go around finding the growth capital uh another way of looking into uh, the capital is also the the for how much time you are going to need the capital so for example if you need a capital for only for anything from one month period to up to six months period uh, you are mostly talking about the working capital uh which you because you know that it's a short term requirement it's going to go into the business and and then there is will be an inflow that is going to come back into it uh the growth capital how you can look at it is if you are seeing something where you require the money for next six months to let's say Two years, three years, four years, kind of a period. That is fundamentally where you can say that hey, this is what I'm looking is a lump sum money. I'm not going to pay the entire uh, finance or the entire capital or entire return in in next three months or six months period. But I will basically going to pay it in in certain tranches or in certain way uh, in next three years or four years period because that's the capital which I'm employing right now. It's going to take that much time to uh, uh, generate the return. so that's that's how we, uh, we generally say that you can look in into in terms of uh, uh, the need of capitals or how the capitals could be now um, you know one interesting thing that uh, that happens and uh, that we have seen happening in 2007 8 crisis also is uh, basically that uh, you know during 2007 8 crisis is what we the term in uh, alternate lending has come up in in, in the world um, during this crisis what happens is a, you all are maybe aware of that a lot of banks has gone out of a uh, business uh, there was lehman uh, brothers which has collapsed there was a lot of investment bankers investment large investment bank has merged to something else uh, Uh, there was a term that got coined during that time, which is uh, "too big to fail," right? Which is fundamentally saying that is the bank is too big to fail, and the government has to step in to, uh, you know, uh, save the banks. We have seen similar instances happening in India with Yes Bank also, uh, where where the government has to step in to save the bank. But that's the concept of alternate lending has actually came during that time where banks was unable to lend. So fundamentally, if you see what are the what is uh, what a banks are banks are fundamentally a uh, a uh, sort of a pl uh, place where they take money from somebody who has surplus money and then lend money to somebody else who needs that money now since these two people who has a surplus money and who requires the money in a ideal scenario are not known to each other they uh, they both comes to the bank asking for it and bank in a way become a broker in between uh now this was what has been created maybe 100 200 years back when banks was created but now as you may scenario where there is technology uh you know we with with a lot of social media and other things we are literally connected with people on a uh, uh with a like you know one to three degree of separation we know the information about other person there's a thought process that has started going on is do we even need banks for for uh, uh to uh, cater to the need of deposits or to cater to the need of uh, uh you know uh, borrowing from that perspective and that's where in 2007 8 when banks were on a run uh, a lot of companies started coming up and saying that hey how about using technology to uh, just bring both these forces which is uh, with basically people having surplus money with people having a uh, need of money or desire of money together and say that can you come up with a profitable proposition on that time right so that's that's the advent of uh, you know, alternative lending that has happened at that time uh, and and uh, after that a lot of different forces of funding the businesses start coming up uh, so what are the benefits of it of course is digital online so you know it uses technology a lot so the paper trails the other things have started going out uh, people find it so earlier when the banks you have to spend like uh, months and months to get a file process now you don't need to uh, the customer uh, service becomes amazing uh, uh, you know so earlier when you are going to the banks asking what have happened to my loan uh, application now actually companies are coming and saying that hey this is the status this is what uh, uh, so a lot of bureaucracy and red tapes and all those things has been cut into the entire process it's but it's become a much more smoother and faster way uh, to borrow the funds uh, i always say that you know a lot of people when they start the business they start the business to do something else but then they spend around 40 to 50% of time just looking for finance uh, because that's a hardship which or that's a ugly truth which which most of the businesses has to uh, um, 
go through. So a lot of times the promoters or the founders as goes into, uh, or the senior management goes into finding out the source of capital. So uh, this 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 uh, alternate lending uh, is has become a uh, a force to reckon with because it's basically reduced your time that uh, as a business owner uh, you are putting up in terms of getting the access to capital. So uh, what I will do is I I will briefly talk about uh, you know what are the different ways of or alternate ways through which you a business can raise uh, you know money from the market. Uh, of course, uh, at Credix, we are the pioneer of uh, this first way of doing it, which is invoice discounting. Uh, now, uh, just to uh, tell you what is invoice discounting, it's it's actually a very, very old concept. In India, we used to know it by the name of Hyundai. Uh, so it's, it's nothing but a Hyundai, a Hyundai in, a, in a more uh, glamorized, tech-oriented way where we are calling it is invoice discounting. Uh, what happens is, let's say I'm a supplier. I'm a supplier. I, I provide uh, man, uh, man forces or I, I, I supply temp resources uh, to a large company. Now, uh, my entire asset is my uh, employees and nothing else. Uh, now, the problem is when I go to banks for a loan or for anything, banks ask me for an asset which I may not have. So, uh, but I may have an uh, invoice which is approved by the large company and saying that I'm going to going to pay you in next 90 days. Now, what uh, invoice discounting does is it gives the power to the business to sell these invoices at a discount uh, to to uh, uh, a financial institution or to a non-financial institution and get access to uh, access to the uh, credit. Uh, the beauty of invoice discounting is it's, it's an off balance sheet product. So what happens in a in a in your uh, accounting entry is there is an account payable which is sitting on your asset side and you're just selling off those assets. So fundamentally you it's it's as simple as having chairs and tables in your uh, office which you want to sell it off it's as simple as that so that's that's basically invoice discounting works and it's it's basically uh, providing a, a finance against your current assets which is there in your book so that's that's uh, the beauty of uh, invoice discounting is and also why it is becomes amazing is because there is a counterparty risk which is on the uh, on your client so let's say your client is the likes of tatas or reliance you can actually uh, you know uh, piggy bank on on their credit rating or their uh, strength and and get the capital at a lower cost than what you generally get it at. So that's that's the inverse discounting. Of course, uh, Credix helps you out, um, and and we are the pioneer in inverse discounting. We're the first uh, inverse discounting company in India, and we are still the biggest uh, inverse discounting company in India. So uh, we can help you on that part. Uh, the second, which is again a very non-traditional way of uh, raising funds or uh, uh, getting finance, is convertibles and non-convertible debentures. Now, uh, CP, uh, now CDs and NCDs are something which is very, very popular in 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 the large companies. So, um, again, uh, I'm again going to take you back to the new one news that I read today is uh, that a lot of companies, because of the lower bond prices in the market, are actually raising uh, NCDs from the market. So they are. Uh, converting their high yield bonds into a low yield bonds because of the lower pricing right now that is going on. So uh, generally the bonds and the CPs, the corporate papers and CDs and NCDs are, are, the, uh, are with mostly with the large companies as in the Reliance and the Tata's raised thousands and thousands of crores using the, these modes. But for smaller companies, they are never able to get that in terms of how they can use uh, these powerful tools uh, to get the, get the finance. Um, so I tell you the difference between convert, uh, convertibles and non-convertibles. Convertibles is fundamentally is a way, way of debt which which after a certain times gets converted into a into an equity uh, format, which is basically a partial ownership of your business, or you can raise money to a non-convertible, which is very similar to. Uh, your normal uh, finance is just that a unit gets uh, uh, accumulated and you can uh, you know sell it to again to uh, uh, financial institution as well as non financial institution uh, now again this is uh, one area again where Credix can help you uh, we have started uh, working on creating convertibles and non convertibles debentures for smaller companies um, traditionally cds and ncds has been only done for very large companies uh, typical NCD size goes up till 100 crores, 200 crores, even like for large companies, even uh, 
are tens of thousands of crore. Uh, but what where we can help you is to find out uh, a smaller size C, uh, and CDs like uh, you know based upon your need from one crore to a couple of crores where we can uh, underwrite those NCDs and do a private placement of those NCDs. So that's an another very very efficient and very amazing ways of uh, finding out uh, uh, finance in this market. Uh, the third uh, way is again peer-to-peer -peer, uh, lending. Uh, this is fundamentally where uh, you know you use this uh, P2P concept as mostly either for personal loan. It's more prevalent on retail side and on consumer side for personal loan. Uh, but off late few of the companies have also started working with the small, uh, very micro small businesses to provide them in a business loan. The ticket sizes are uh, typically less. It's not goes very high and uh, typically has a higher interest because of uh, the NPAs associated with uh, it but this is also one way where you can uh, find out in terms of how to uh, get access to capital uh, unfortunately credits uh, does not do any P2P lending and that's why we, we cannot offer uh, on that side but there are a lot of players who are doing P2P and that's another way to raise funds now moving up to the uh, the next option of how to uh, what's the other alternate ways of uh, raising fund is also uh, what we call is loan against property asset securities and why we have put all uh, things into it because any asset is an asset it could be a movable assets like uh, your factory your home uh, your uh, you know other things like uh, jewelries etc but it also can be in the form of other assets like for example as I say account receivables is an asset in your books right so any invoice discounting that you, you do is fundamentally a law against your current assets similarly uh, securities you can have investment that has been done uh, by uh, you know on on in uh, FDs or in mutual funds or in other uh, stock market, uh, you can actually use those securities to actually get loan. Uh, the beauty of these uh, uh, loan against property asset securities is the cost of fund is very, very less in that. Typically on a market, you can get it at a sub 10 kind of a level. Uh, of course, there will be a hairline on that in terms of how much margin that, they are, that the company, that the financing companies is allowing you to take. Uh, but uh, this is this is a wonderful way. Um, one other beauty of uh, loan against securities is uh, you. Let's say I have invested in a mutual fund, right? And my mutual fund uh, is giving me, let's say, seven eight percent return. Now you might feel that hey, uh, rather than uh, uh, taking a loan, why not just take that money and uh, put it, uh, you know, withdraw that money from mutual fund and put it in my business. But let me tell you another scenario. Uh, Let's say your business is going to give you a 20% return of, of the same money as compared to the mutual fund, which is giving you a 7% return. Now, uh, what I would suggest is take, keep the money in mutual fund, take a loan against that money from, from a financial institution at 7 8%. So that return is getting a square off. Now, once that gets a square off, what you can do is uh, you take that money and put it into the business. Uh, and basically now what you're doing is you're creating a leverage situation. So your return on uh, on uh, on the entire equity is going to rise many fold on that, right? Because it's fundamentally and your investment in mutual fund is still intact. So it's still basically you are still earning that seven eight percent. So you are not letting go your seven eight percent to uh, get a twenty percent return, but you are basically making both the money. So that's the power of leverage that you are working on, and that's what I said about is the uh, is the uh, you know the beauty of this product is. So again, uh, loan against poverty asset securities is another product which where TEDx can help you out. Uh, you know, if you have, uh, if you want to have, uh, uh, if you want to finance against your, uh, you know, FT or mutual funds or uh, property or any kind of other assets, uh, you can always reach out to us on that also. Uh, now the, for the fifth way is 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 a very interesting way which still hasn't make a lot of inroads into India, but. Uh, is a fundamentally amazing way of uh, uh, financing is what we call is revenue based financing. There are different words of it, which is like MRR or ARR. MRR stands for monthly run rate or monthly revenue run rate and ARR is annualized uh, revenue run rate. So what you do is, let's say you are a business in, in a subscription business or you have a business where you have a fixed set of revenue which is coming up. 
their revenue is not going very up the revenue is not going down also but it's a fixed set of revenue which is coming up now let's say as a business you want a growth capital you want to uh, you want let's say uh, you know you want some money to spend in in your uh, technological uh, you want to make a new product you want to make a new machinery or whatever those kind of things but you're not getting that kind of capital access to what you can do is you can work out with with a financial institution to offer you a revenue based financing which is basically means that whatever is your pre existing revenue you are parting with a part of that pre existing revenue with that uh, financial institution uh to give you an example here let's say i'm a subscription based company where i'm uh, you know let's say i'm selling some kind of a subscription to to uh, companies i have a, a revenue of around 10 crore a, a month right and i want to set up another product where i need let's say uh, you know 60 crores up front to set up that product but maybe i the no company is ready to give me 60 crore because 10 crore i'm asking for almost more than 50% of my annualized revenue as a as a loan what you can do here is you can work with financial institution to uh, escrow your entire revenue of 10 crore per month based on that basically you say give me you are upfronting your entire revenue so entire one year or two years of it you are upfronting getting that 60 crores out of it uh, and building up a new product at the same time your existing revenue is also giving you a part of the revenue back to you so that is also a very interesting alternate way of uh, raising finance uh, from the market uh the last I, i think this the last one on this uh, is is the merchant cash advance uh this is a new way again that has come up uh, uh, fundamentally based upon your debit cards and credit card swap uh, swipe or or your point of sale machine swipe or a upi swipe and all those things so what happens there is uh, let's say you are in a business uh, where you are a direct to consumer business you are getting a lot of swipes from, from your customers through your debit card credit card or upi uh based upon your cash flow that is coming out from your credit cards and other uh um, a point of sale uh, channels what you can do is this you can get a merchant cash advance from, from uh, a lot of uh, financial institution where you can uh, uh basically say that okay for against this cash flow that i'm getting from from these uh, different uh, digital channel uh, give me a certain uh, this much money and you deduct the money from each swipe so what i mean is let's say you are getting a 100 rupees upi uh, payment uh, every uh, from every customer and there are 10 customers that is coming to you right so what you say is 10% of that which is 10 rupees from per swipe will go to the your financial uh, to your lender and the 90 rupees is still coming to you but now the 10 rupees that the lender get from 10 uh, customers in a day is making 100 rupees for him so you don't feel the pinch uh, the uh, the lender doesn't uh, doesn't feel the pinch and the everything becomes much better so that's another and very very interesting mode of uh, you know uh, alternate lending alternate finance that is also come in the market uh now um, what uh, i also want to since we have touched on to alternate lending and um, credix is one of the pioneer in alternate lending uh, i also wants to tell you in terms of where all credix can help you out uh, so credix product suits help you out in working capital with inverse discounting uh, uh, we can also work it out with a convertibles and non convertible debentures which can be used as as a growth capital uh we can also do a loan against properties assets securities uh both as a working capital as well as a growth capital uh we can help you out in a revenue based financing uh where uh, you know if you need capital based upon your existing the uh, existing revenue we can uh, discount those and we can uh, provide finance against them and we also have another uh, uh, product called early payment technology solution where we work with enterprises uh, to uh, uh, basically pre pawn the payment or give early payments to uh, to the uh, to the uh, business uh, to their vendors and suppliers so um, one thing i i forgot and i possibly hasn't touch in my presentation is uh, in there's b2c part of it and there is a b2b businesses uh, a major problem in in the uh, covid scenario which we are seeing in the b2b part is a lot of companies or a lot of clients are delaying their vendor payments uh, they had so earlier when they are paying in anything from 30 60 90 either they are coming into the press or they are using the force majeure clause 
to actually uh, pay you in a lot in in much higher time as in instead of 60 days they're paying in 120 or 150 days so again that's uh, this is uh, where we can again help you out in terms of if you have any businesses where you are uh, your clients are uh, delaying the payments in terms of it you can come to us we can discount your invoices and we can give you the payment or, or and provide you the working capital or the cash flow on, on that part so uh, that's uh, uh, on the on the thing now uh, before moving to the q and i just want to uh, conclude the presentation here in terms of how do i see in terms of the way forward uh, i think what will happen in a short term is a lot of banks will sit on the cash rather than disperse the cash uh, the reason why is because of the uncertainty uh, right now nobody knows where the market is going or where the uh, how anything will pan out I don't think even government is aware of that how things is going to pan out in terms of uh, the impact on the economy, impact on the jobs, and a lot of things. If there are going to be, uh, there are estimates that there will be a millions and millions of job loss that will be happening. Millions of businesses is going to shut down. Uh, then of course there will be impact on everybody. The consumer spending will go down. If the consumer spending will go down, then the demand will go down, leading to the uh, impact on both B two C as well as B two B businesses. So uh, that is uh, that's going to be a short-term impact. Uh, what I also have seen uh, in 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 the previous, I'd say, 30 to 45 days is is even though a lot of businesses are sitting on cash, they have cash because of this uncertainty, they are not ready to uh, do anything with it because they don't know how this is pan out. They're just sitting on it, whether it's vendor payment whether it's uh, any uh, growth uh, that they want to do or all kind of those kind of things. So I think post the lockdown, uh, once we see a little bit of recovery in our sanity coming back to life, uh, I think all these businesses which are sitting on cash, those money uh, will start coming back into the market. So that will also act as a stimulus in the market. Um, I think in the... Uh, um, what uh, again coming back onto the financing or capital part of it uh, i think uh, what companies has to do is uh, they need to work with find out any source and every source of capital they can get to access to and find it out in terms of if they can uh, get those uh, capital as i said in the beginning uh, i don't think uh, you know, the cost of capital is important right now. Uh, the valuation of the business is important right now. What is important possibly right now is to survive and still maybe grow a little bit in that because once this phase will be over, I think there will be a lot of, lot of uh, opportunities coming up. There will be a new world. There will be a new order that will be there. And uh, a lot of opportunities will come in terms of how we can uh, take it, uh, how the businesses can take it forward from there. So um, that's that's on the uh, on the presentation side. Uh, now, what I uh, again I uh, request all of you if you have any questions, please uh, put it on the Q and A part, and uh, I will try to take questions there. Uh, uh, it may not possible for me to take all the questions, but we'll try to see how many questions I can take from from that side. So I think uh, one question which has come up is. Uh, uh, what will the impact of COVID-19 on the economy and will the finance sector uh, easily provide trade to businesses? I think I have answered in uh, bits and pieces here and there, but again, I just want to reiterate it. In, uh, we need to divide it into few uh, uh, phases. In the short term, uh, there is going to be a liquidity crunch. Uh, it's not because there's going to be uh, less money in the market. It's mostly because uh, a lot of banks and FIs is not sure how this will pan out, how it's going to NPA, uh, whether the companies who has behaved better in the past is going to behave the same way in the present or not. So because of all those uncertainty, uh, these... Uh, uh, you know, a lot of banks and financial institutions will just sit on a wait and watch mode. Uh, possibly after six to nine months or maybe 12 months also is when the uh, credit will start coming back into the market and then we'll see start easing off a lot of uh, those things. So there's a question which is, uh, are this uh, secured or unsecured facilities? Uh, mostly, uh, as I said, is uh, you have both the options in, in alternate lending. Uh, it can be secured, it can be unsecured. Uh, if you want to take uh, financing against your uh, securities or loan or assets, it's, it's sort of a secured facility. But at the same time, if you're doing something like a revenue-based financing or uh, other modes, then it's, it's uh, unsecured. As I said, uh, what is important is getting the capital, 
uh, as a business, I would suggest not to look into too much into secured and unsecured version of it. Uh, if you have assets, well and good, use it, get the uh, finance. Even if you don't have assets, look into way of as alternative uh, lending to see uh, those options. So now uh, there's also some questions on, um, on the overall uh, invoice discounting framework. Uh, so how it works on credit. So how it works on credit is uh, for invoice discounting is uh, there are buyers and there are sellers. So once the seller sell it to buyer and raises an invoice at that time, the uh, uh, they can come to credit. Uh, they can, uh, of course, they, before that they need to get registered with credit. But once they're registered and after they raise an invoice, uh, they can uh, raise this. Uh, they can send this invoices to credit. Uh, credit will verify these invoices with the buyer if these invoices are genuine invoices or not. Uh, credit will also open an escrow account for uh, for the seller. Uh, where the uh, buyer is going to remit the money uh, at, at the time of payment. And once that has been done, then the credit will disperse the money to the seller on day zero or day one and day 60, day 90, whenever is as per the contract term, whenever the payment is going to come from the buyer. At that time, payment will come directly into the escrow account and credit will uh, get the money uh, from that escrow account. And whatever is the leftover after adjusting for the, uh, for the discounting will again get passed through to the seller. So that's that's uh, fundamentally the process around on uh, on invoice discounting. So there are a lot of questions around the documentation and process. So I thought that I should answer all of them together. Also um, on invoice discounting, uh, I can see there are a lot of very detailed question on documentation requirement to pricing to uh, how to go, do it. I uh, I would request all of you to please go to our website. There is a detailed FAQ is there. There is a detailed process is there, and we'll help you all of you out in terms of that. Uh, please uh, go and put your details into the uh, into the uh, form which is there available on the website and I uh, will also reach out to you to explain you how this this works. Uh, there are a few also questions on uh, this, uh, invoices and uh, bills raised to governments uh, and can credits help in that. Uh, the question is depends upon uh, your uh, arrangement or your uh, uh, contract with the government. If your contract with the government is is uh, is good and vetted and will once it get vetted by our legal team, we can provide you invoice discounting or finance against government invoices also. Query is coming on in terms of does credits only help in MS uh, blue chip invoices or non blue chip also. As I said, um, credits does a lot of, uh, though we mostly uh, blue chip becomes, uh, our invoices raised against blue chip companies becomes obvious and uh, that's an obvious place where we help. Uh, we also look in into non blue chip companies in terms of their credit quality. Uh, we help a lot. We work with a lot of startups. We uh, we provide finances to a lot of startups uh, through invoice discounting and other means. At the same time, uh, uh, they, these startups are no way of blue chip companies, but we do it. But at the same time, what we also look into in terms of that, uh, if we are doing a non blue chip uh, companies invoices, uh, then what kind of uh, comfort factor that we can provide it to our investors? So uh, it means that uh, we either explode their entire cash flow or we can get uh, some kind of comfort with a mix of things where the cash flow is explored, but we, there is also a, some kind of a, uh, securities is getting provided. So uh, we have our own in house risk team, uh, which underwrites all of these uh, invoices. And once it's underwritten, we provide a complete uh, access of those reports to all the investors who can look into it and make an on call in terms of uh, what financing that they can do, uh, they, whether they want to do the financing or not. Uh, in a way, you can, uh, for all the partners here, you can see us more as a structured finance company where you can come up to us for any kind of, uh, you know, financing which you, uh, which the businesses needs and uh, we will try to structure something for uh, those businesses. Question on when economic growth estimation is below 1%, what do you think about demand of capital in coming days? Uh, so I think even, see, it's, it's, it's basically in a normal distribution. So even if the economy is going to grow by 1%, there will be businesses who will be growing by 10%, 20%, or even 100% also. Uh, as I said, there will be few businesses which will be getting closed down. There will be few businesses which are going to grow tremendously. Uh, we need to be on the side where we keep on looking for the uh, opportunities where as a business owner, we can find it out what are the next big opportunities uh, that is coming to us. And I think uh, we should go and grab it. Uh, for businesses who are growing, 
I think there will always be a demand for capital. They always need capital, and uh, uh, you know uh, they they need to uh, into look out for those capital. At the same time, a lot of large companies. It's the lockdown. What it has done, it has fundamentally paused everything for forty five to fifty days period. Right. That means even the cash flow everything, but. Businesses are still uh, giving salaries, giving work, and all those things, right? So what will happen is this pause, uh, uh, this pause that has been created by the lockdown. A lot of these companies will, uh, you know, try to uh, grow on a hyper mode to see that if they can cover for those kind of things, especially the listed companies, right? Because there is share price implication and all those things. So those companies will create a lot of demand uh, for capital in the coming days. So there are also a few question on revenue based financing. So revenue based financing as I mention is is basically based upon your existing uh, revenue in a uh, layman terms assume that whatever revenue that you have you have stored the entire revenue to to a lender and uh, against that revenue the lender is giving you a lump sum because he has a forecast that you are continue to sit on that revenue so your current month revenue might be only few lakhs but the lender is ready to give you a few crores because he is forecasting or he is sure that uh, for coming months, for next 24 months or 36 months, uh, there will be a consistent flow of revenue that will be coming up. So that's that's a fundamental uh, things on revenue-based uh, financing. Uh, as I said, it's still in the asset stage in India, uh, with only few firms are providing it. Credit being one of them, uh, but it's a, it's a very prevalent form in in um, in, in the uh, US as well as. Uh, in, in certain form, what we call is a venture debt in, in Indian startup terminology is also very similar to, you can say, is a revenue uh, product. Also, there's a question, what is the uh, funding that TEDx can do on inverse discounting? Uh, we can do any size and lots of on, uh, on inverse discounting. We don't have a lot uh, limitation here, unlike most of the financial institution. Uh, in our lifetime, we have done as a small invoice size as a uh, couple of lakhs to as much as uh, you know 50 crores so uh, we can we can finance uh, invoice discounting on the invoice discounting size we can finance any limit that is possible provided this uh, being approved by our internal risk team on this uh, there are a few questions on the rate of an invoice discounting uh, as i said uh, there's not a fixed rate uh, as such in invoice discounting what it happens is looks into the buyer's profile the seller profile uh, the better the buyer uh, the uh, the better the seller the lower the rate uh, if let's say assume there is a seller who is uh, has a revenue of few lakhs, uh, if it analyzed revenue of few lakhs, but has a customers like Tata's or MNCs like Google and Microsoft, can get a very very amazing rate as compared to a large company with a, a few crores in revenue. But the counterparty or the buyer is again a not so large company, but maybe a thousand crore odd company. So. That's why I said that's the beauty of inverse discounting is you can piggyback on the uh, back of your uh, credit rating of your buyer. The better the bu your buyers, the lower the cost of fund for you in inverse discounting. There's also a question on do we have a reverse factoring facility? Yes, we do have a reverse factoring facility also. We work with buyers also where we do the reverse factoring piece with, with companies who wants to do the payable funding also. There's also a few questions on the uh, CDs and NCD part uh, in terms of how Kirvix can help and uh, uh, you know how uh, businesses can offer it. As I said, uh, you can uh, reach out to us through different mail options and we can give you more details on how we can help you in raising NCDs. Uh, again, NCDs has uh, depends upon the credit quality of the companies, uh, their revenue run rate, uh, how and what kind of assets they are sitting upon and various other factors. Uh, typically, NCDs are something which mostly the large companies are looked for in their lifetime. Uh, but uh, what we have done with FedEx is we have tried to uh, give the same power of NCDs and CDs to smaller companies and see that how we can uh, raise uh, you know a smaller chunk of finance uh, in in the form of NCDs for even smaller companies. Also, a few questions uh, which is coming up in how can we request for um, uh, you know uh, for uh, financing options with credit. So uh, as I said, uh, please uh, go into our website, fill up forms there. There are forms there. There are also a lot of website. There's a toll free number to call. You can do all of those things to reach out to us. Uh, the the good thing about credit 
Access, we are a completely digital platform. Uh, all our uh, onboarding process, everything is digital. You don't need to be physically uh, doing anything. So if you have uh, uh, documents there at your home where you can scan and upload it into our portal, we can start going from that side itself. Uh, there's also some questions on uh, what all, uh, how uh, they're on documentation of what we collect from uh, the borrowers. We collect a lot of documentation from uh, borrowers. We also look into their credit bureau data. Uh, we also get access to a lot of third-party database. We have access to MCA website where they, we get the, their uh, data on financial statements, etc. And then we use our own proprietary uh, decisions in uh, proprietary risk models to uh, to, find, uh, to fundamentally say that whether we can go ahead or not go ahead with this particular uh, borrower. Uh, once that comes, then we do the escrow arrangement and other things for the routing of cash flow. And uh, then only we allow a uh, 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 seller to list their invoices on the platform. All these things, uh, what we collect, the data, the et cetera, is also available to our investors who can look and take a call whether they uh, they want to uh, fund those invoices or not. Uh, in Credix's lifetime in over four and a half to five years, uh, we have not seen any invoice which has not got picked up by our investors because we have a large, very, very large investor base uh, that we work with. Uh, uh, and also typically what we have seen is our investors buy these invoices in a record time of you know sometimes uh, half an hour sometimes couple of hours but uh, a lot of the a lot of our clients it says that it is faster than uh, dispersal by banks or and bfcs i can see more and more questions are there on on um, on the cds and cds part as well as uh, lap etc as i said that uh, you know we can help very small companies also raise an NCD companies having any companies having more than four crore in net worth are eligible to have an NCD uh, facility. Uh, as I said, we can help you out in those terms and can set it up the facilities for you and uh, do the pilot placement of these NCDs to, uh, to provide you uh, the liquidity. A uh, question on uh, can Credex provide loan against property? As I said, yes, we can provide loan against properties, assets, securities, etc. Uh, again, you can reach out to the uh, to us for, for anything like, around that. Uh, there's also a question on uh, what is the uh, what all uh, geography that we cover. We are a pan India. Uh, we cover as of now we are covering around 500, uh, um, you know, small big large cities together. Uh, we we can do the entire India, anywhere in, 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 in India, if you have any businesses, we can help you out on that. Uh, there's a question on uh, will Credex do businesses in the next two months, fresh lending, inverse discounting. Actually, we are already doing businesses in, uh, in, in right now as we speak. Uh, um, we, in fact, possibly would be only maybe, you know, three, four uh, lenders in, in, in India who is still lending. Uh, what we did actually on how COVID impacted us is uh, for the first 10 days, uh, as soon as the lockdown started or we started getting even before lockdown started, uh, we actually stopped all the dispersal to get our risk models right. Uh, we created a lot of risk models in between. Uh, we, uh, we benchmark our cash flows. We see that how the businesses are reacting on that. Based upon that, we created a different framework or different model altogether to see that can uh, if we can still help uh, uh, the businesses in, in this time. And post 10 days, we started listing. Uh, we are still not at our full strength as of now. It's not that we are taking up all the invoices that is coming to us. Uh, so earlier when we used to decline, let's say 50%, now we are declining almost 80% of it. Uh, but at the same time, as I said, Every crisis also presents a lot of opportunity. I think we, there is a lot of opportunity that we are seeing it. Uh, we recently worked with one of the ventilators, uh, um, one of the medical equipment manufacturer who supplies ventilator to the government. Uh, and we feel that, uh, you know, it's possibly our way of uh, supporting the uh, air and doing support uh, in this COVID scenario. So, uh, as I said, there is a lot of opportunity also that is also coming up this way. And uh, we at Credex is looking into those opportunities and seeing if we can. Uh, there's also some question on uh, credit insurance uh, for receivable discounting. We are working with a uh, few insurance companies to see that if we can get some kind of credit receivable insurance. Uh, uh, there are a few cases that we are trying to do. There are some regulatory hurdle in that. 
uh, we are working with the regulators also uh, to see that if we can come up with some solutions on that part and uh, you know get uh, get uh, some kind of a good uh, win win situation for all the parties involved in this uh, so maybe i can take uh, one last question there are like over uh, 200 questions apparently so um, Okay, so there is also some questions on the turnaround time. So, um, the as I said, the the best part is uh, we are a digital platform, uh, so we don't need to gather a lot of uh, documents uh, in terms of the physical document. That reduces our time drastically. Uh, we also have access to a lot of user data, a lot of third-party data, MC data, etc. So, we get a lot of these data, uh, which is uh, which can be readily available uh, directly from the sources and not ask the businesses for that. So it reduced the number of documents that we ask from the business significantly. Uh, of course, KYC is important. So we have to do the KYC. But post that, uh, what we do is mostly we, uh, uh, mostly we look into these documents. Uh, uh, as soon as you complete the documentation within 48 hours, and 48 hours is the uh, the highest ceiling on that but within 48 hours we come back to you with a decision on uh, whether we are sanctioning or not sanctioning it uh, post the sanction later uh, there are some post sanction documentation that needs to be done and uh, um, once you do the post uh, sanction documentation uh, you can start uploading the invoices immediately uh, post invoices uh, upload uh, upload i think it takes at max, possibly around uh, you know a couple of hours to you for for businesses to get the funding. So that's that's on the on the tax side of it, and that's how the uh, TEDx ecosystem uh, works on. So that that brought me to the last uh, question that we have answered. Um, I I know there are tons of questions which is there. There's over like uh, you know 200 questions that has come up, uh, and I'm really sorry for to all of you that we cannot take up all the questions uh, that is coming uh, that has came our way but what we'll do is we are recording all these questions and uh, we are going to try to answer as many questions as we can and send it as an email to uh, form it to all of you to read uh, the recording of this uh, uh, webinar is also going to be available and my team will reach out to all of you uh, with the recordings uh, we'll also make the presentation available to all of you uh, to go through uh, also, in case if you have any questions, uh, any uh, ask on the CredX team, you can reach out to us. Uh, there are different modes. You can reach out to us through social media, any other social media we are present. We are present. Uh, you can go to our website and fill the form. You can reach out to our call center. Uh, you can directly reach out to various email options that is there, and, uh, and we will try to answer all of them. Uh, again, thanks a lot all of you for joining this uh, webinar. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not able to take all the questions, but again, thanks a lot. Uh, request to you all to be safe, uh, keep your family members safe, uh, and you know, if you need any any help in financing, uh, whether Credix can help you or uh, you know, directly provide financing or not, we can always help you in answering the question. We can always connect you to the right person or right thing. Uh, we want to become a partner to you rather than just a lender uh, and that's why we, we want to work very very closely with all, our, all the people in our ecosystem, be it investors, be it uh, uh, you know, businesses who want finance, be it investor who wants to invest so that uh, the entire ecosystem gets benefited out of it. So thanks a lot to everybody. Have a great day. Uh, thank you.